finally we try q3 is equals to r4 but this also violates the diagonal constraint with q2 since no valid position is available for q3 we backtrack to queen 2 and try new position <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to being passionate learner. This video is on the four queens problem, a classic example in artificial intelligence and constant satisfaction problem. Today we will explore how the four queens problem can be formulated as a CSP and how it can be solved using the backtracking search algorithm. Here is an overview of what we will cover in this video on solving the four queens problem using CSP and backtracking. We will begin with an introduction to the four queens problem. Next, we will move on to how we can represent the four queens problem as a CSP. We will define the problem in terms of variables, domains, and constraints. Following this, we will explain the backtracking search algorithm, a fundamental approach to solve CSPs. And then we will demonstrate how we apply backtracking to solve the four queens problem step by step. We will also include a visualization of a backtracking process to help clarify how queens are placed and conflicts are resolved. Towards the end, we will discuss why backtracking works for CSP. Now let's start with the introduction of four queens problem. The four queens problem involves placing four queens on four by four chessboard so that no two queens can attack each other. Queens can attack in a straight line, across rows, columns, and diagonals. The goal is to position all four queens in such a way that none of these attacks are possible. Defining the problem as a CSP. Variables. The four queens Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 are the variables where queen number corresponds to the column number. Then domains are possible rows from 1 to 4 for each queen and constraints are no two queens in the same row, column or diagonal. Now we have defined four queen problem as a CSP. Now let us look at how to solve this using backtracking search. This technique works by incrementally assigning values to variables, uh, that is placing queens on the board. And whenever a conflict arises, such as two queens attacking on each other, the algorithm backtracks to the previous step and it tries a different assignment. By systematically exploring the possible configurations, backtracking search finds a valid solution without having to explore every combination. Steps in backtracking search. Here is a step-by-step -step overview of backtracking process. We will start by placing a queen in the first row, then move to the next column, trying to place another queen while checking for the conflicts. If we can't place a queen without conflicts, we backtrack to the previous column and try a new position. This process is repeated until all four queens are placed without any conflicts. Now we will see how the queens are placed one at a time and if conflict arises, the algorithm backtracks to the previous columns and uh, repositions the queen. This process continues until a solution is found. Initially, our 4x4 four four board is empty. We begin by placing queen 1, q1 and assigning e to two row 1, that is q1 is equals to r1. This placement does not violate any constraint. Next, we will place queen 2. We first try q2 is equals to r1, but this violates the constraint that no two queens can be in the same row. q1 and q2 are both in row 1. So we will move q2 to row 2. So q2 is equals to r2, but this violates the diagonal constraint with q1. Then we try q2 is equals to r3. And this position does not violate any constraints. Now we will place queen 3. We first try q3 is equals to r1, but this violates the row constraint with q1. We move q3 to row 2, q3 is equals to r2, but it violates the diagonal constraint with q2. We try q3 is equals to r3, but this violates the row constraint with q2. Finally, we try q3 is equals to r4, but this also violates the diagonal constraint with q2. Since no valid position is available for q3, we backtrack to queen 2 and try new position. We had placed q2 in r3. We now placed q2 in r4, that is q2 is equals to r4, which does not violate any constraint. Then we will start placing q3 again. We will try q3 is equals to r1 which violates the row constraint with q1. Then we will place q3 in row 2, q3 is equals to r2 
and this position does not violate any constraint. Next, we place queen 4. We try q4 is equals to r1, but this violates both the row constraint with the q1 and the diagonal constraint with q3. We move q4 to row 2, but this violates the row constraint with q3. We try q4 is equals to r3, but this violates the diagonal constraint with q3. Lastly, we try q4 is equals to r4, but this violates both row constraint with q2 and the diagonal constraint with q1. Since no valid position is available for q4, we backtrack to queen 3. We had placed q3 in r2. Now we place queen 3 in row 3, but this violates the diagonal constraint with both q1 and q2. Then try q3 is equals to r4, but this violates the row constraint with q2. No valid position is available for q3, so we will backtrack to queen 2. Since all positions for q2 have been tried, we backtrack further to queen 1 and move q1 to row 2, which does not violate any constraint. We then place q2 again. We try q2 is equals to r1, but this violates the diagonal constraint with q1. We try q2 is equals to r2, but this violates the row constraint with q1. Next, we try q2 is equals to r3, but this violates the diagonal constraint with q1. Finally, we place q2 in a row 4, which does not violate any constraint. Now, we place queen 3. We try q3 is equals to r1, and this position does not violate any constraint. Lastly, we place queen 4. We try q4 is equals to r1, but this violates the row constraint with q3. We try q4 is equals to r2, but this violates the row constraint with queen 1 and the diagonal constraint with both q3 and q2. Finally, we place q4 in a row r3 and this position does not violate any constraint. At this point, all four queens q1, q2, q3 and q4 have been placed on the board without violating any constraint. Thus, we have solved the problem using backtracking search algorithm. Now let's see why backtracking works for CSPs. Backtracking is an efficient algorithm for solving CSPs because it only explores valid configurations. It systematically ensures that all possibilities are checked without to explore every single configuration of a queen on the board. This makes it scalable and practical for solving problems like the end queens problem. I have animated video on solving eight queen problem using backtracking. Its link is given in the description. Please check it out. So in this video, we have seen how four queens problems can be framed as a constant satisfaction problem. We have also explored backtracking as an efficient solution technique with its systematic exploration of possible configuration. This method can be extended to the end queens problem or applied to any other constraint based problems. Thank you for watching this video till end. See you in my next video. Till then, being passionate learner, keep learning. Thank you.